All right, guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to Psychedelica of the Black Butterfly. And I don't have the right guy on screen right now, but we are starting Yamato's route, actually. And uh, this is when we first run into him. So we're going to be jumping around a little bit again, as we do. Um, I actually had to start a new game for this. I couldn't load a previous part of the flowchart for some reason. So I don't know what that's going to unlock for us, but anyway. Yamato has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven short stories as well. So quite a bit of content with our boy, but I'm excited because uh, if you've been watching any of this, you know I've been simping for him pretty hard up to now. <laughs> so yeah, should be in for a good time. Let's uh, reacquaint ourselves with him when we first met him. We're in a real tight spot here. What's going to happen to us? Shut the hell up! How should I know? I reached the entrance and observed the situation from behind a nearby pillar. This has to be some kind of hidden camera show, right? <laughs> oh yeah, you got me real good! You jokers with the cameras can come out now! The makeup and effects were way cool and all! Would you shut your mouth for two seconds? Two men are surrounded by monsters in front of the door, in a panic over their situation. And there are three monsters. From this distance, they'd get caught even if I called out. And I'm not fast enough to be a decoy. You're so short-sighted about a loss for words. What? Why are you here? Okay, so, hello, old boo. Unfortunately, you're not who I'm spending time with, so... A monster moves in and swings his arm towards one of the men. Woo! He jumps backwards to avoid the attack, but bumps into the door when he does. These things are trying to kill us! Ugh. Well, in that case... Hey, monsters! Eat him first! He's a total meathead, so even his brains ought to be quite delicious! Give me a break! Don't offer me up to him! You brought it up, so you go first. Oh no, I don't want to die yet. The two glare at one another as the monster prepares for another swing. The next attack is sure to hit one of them. What am I gonna do? If only I had some kind of weapon. Yeah, like the person in the fox mask. If I had a weapon... A weapon. A gun. If I had that gun, I... Could save my future boo! Let's-a go! What? There is a flash before my eyes and a heavy metallic object appears in my tightly gripped hand. Okay, let's skip through this bit a little bit again. Weapons in our hands! Time for a minigame, probably. Alright. Let's go! Yep. Come on, Master Man. <laughs> You're gonna give me a tutorial again. <laughs> Look, I did pretty good last time, okay? Not saying I'm gonna do good this time, but... You know, it could happen. Oh, that wasn't so good. I'm not scrolling over the shoot button by accident. Like I was last time. No, that wasn't very good either. The key is like really getting as many butterflies locked onto as possible before shooting. It's a little difficult sometimes. Ah, oh, I missed the kaleidoscopy one. That's not good. I'm not gonna do well. I'm gonna call it right now. Seems to be a lot of butterflies this time. Unless I'm just crazy. Come on. Man, 
right up to the wire. Okay. Well, Hikage, how did I do? Hey, I'll take that! <laughs> you know what? I just need to be down on myself every time I play this game. Because when I think I'm doing well, then I get shut down. But when I'm like, ah, man, I totally fluffed it. And it's like, here's an S rank. All right, I'll take it. Moving on with my life. <laughs> I like them beans, Yamato. Struck by our weapons, the monsters give out a death yowl as their physical shapes dissipate. <sighs> Did we beat them? Yeah. Looks like it. What a relief. The monsters melt into a kaleidoscope of black butterflies, which are absorbed into the accessories we're wearing. They went into my butterfly hairpin. Is it safe to leave it like this? Actually, I'm feeling a little breathless. Ugh. You okay? Yes, just a little out of breath. My body feels heavy. Not physically, but in some kind of emotional way. Okay. So we killed the monsters. Hello. Who are you people? What's with the guns? Um, well... The suspicious inquiry is punctuated by his heavy breathing. How do we explain? I'm at a loss for how to explain. Trying to put it into words is next to impossible. We saved your lives, so maybe you could take it easy with that tone. We could have just left you for dead. Saved us? Yeah, that's what it looked like, but we can't trust a couple of people running around packing that kind of heat. I don't disagree, but we can't trust you either. We shouldn't have gotten involved. There was no benefit in saving you people. The hell you say? Hey! Both of you, calm down! I try to plant myself between them. When I do, I feel a man's hand on my shoulder. Now, now, let's all take a deep breath. They saved us, and that's a fact. You'd better thank them, okay? <clears throat> Aw, poor guy, you don't even know how to say thank you. Even though this cutie here put her life on the line for you, hmm? Thank you. N no it was nothing. I'm glad you're safe. Huh? The instant I breathe a sigh of relief, the outline of the gun vanishes and the entire thing disperses into the air. It disappeared. I open and close my right hand. After I repeat this action a few times, the man slowly looks up. You know, I never noticed before that Yamato and Karasaba were shocked by that, but Hikage was not. He's like, it's gone. Look, it's dangerous here. Let's head somewhere else. Alright. And just like that. So, I'm gonna skip forward a little bit. I... I'm struggling to remember. At least we have the, um ability to go back if anything but I honestly don't remember much of what happens after this part okay so we're through the prologue we're in the chapter one so we'll just see when we started seeing things with Yamato Going out. Okay, we can definitely skip all this stuff. I don't want to jump into the flowchart just yet because there's going to be a part where I have to save and then go into the flowchart. That's why I'm doing uh, skipping through the normal stuff right now. Um, I just wanted to double check something real quick. I. Okay, this is just when we were solving stuff and getting memories. Okay, we're still safe to skip ahead a bit. And then you come and bring us the hot chocolate with the cinnamon, which is delicious. I was looking to say, it's still delicious. Ah, chapter two. Okay. So, actually here, I'm going to go out to the flowchart. I'm going to make a save first. I just want to make sure I'm not, not hecking myself too early. Put that right there. There we go. 
go to flowchart. And it's around here that we have our first short story. Where was it? Is it about brothers? Yes. Okay. So let's do that first, and then we'll go back into chapter two. We've seen this before, but, you know, it's on the list, so we're going to do it. Despite having gone to bed a while ago, I'm unable to fall asleep. I get up and make my way to the living room. I make some hot tea and sit on the sofa to drink it. I feel a little calmer after that. When I'm alone, I start to think about my family. The memories that came back to me are holding my heart together, and yet they also feel as though they're stuck into it like a knife of loneliness. Haruka. Dad. Koro. I miss you. That picture of my family was sent to me after we put the kaleidoscope shard on top of the cap. Unwittingly, I find myself staring at it. It hurts to think about. I look so happy in the photo, and smiling beside me is my younger sister Haruka. With me gone, I'm sure Haruka and Dad are both worried sick. I'm sort of like a mother to Haruka. I hope she's not lonely without me. <sighs> I guess there's no point in thinking about it. While some of my memories have returned, it's still not all of them. There's still so much I don't know. But that's why I keep coming back to the memories of my family. They're all I have right now. What are you doing up so late? Hey, Yamato. My eyes had been glued to my phone, but when I look up, Yamato is standing over me. I couldn't get to sleep, so I was just killing time here. I hear you. Same for me. He holds up a cup of coffee and inclines it toward me. You too, huh? I guess we just can't get out of our heads. Yeah. Mind if I sit next to you? No, go ahead. I move to the edge of the sofa to make room for Yamato. He puts his cup down and flops into the seat next to me. Silence falls between us as we sit. I can't think of anything to say. Unable to stand the awkward silence, Yamato finally speaks. Come on, say something. I... I don't know what to say. Why don't you say something? Don't have much to say. Our attempt at a conversation fails, and silence overcomes us once again. Ugh, how did it end up like this? I look down and grip my cell phone. I thought I wanted to talk to him, but now that the opportunity has presented itself, I'm nervous. He's as gruff as usual. It makes me feel like he's always angry about something. I don't think he's actually mad about anything, but I can't shake the feeling that I'd be annoying him if I tried to talk to him. Hey, Benayuri. Oh, um, yes? I'm surprised by his sudden question and nearly dropped my phone. What the heck? Don't be so jumpy. I'm not gonna bite you. R right Sorry. I wanted to ask. Do you want to go back to where you came from? Outside the manor, I mean. Uh, of course I do. Isn't it the same for you? Yeah. I want to get out of here immediately. He frowns, a wrinkle forming between his eyes as he purses his lips. I can sense how serious he is about it. Is there someone waiting for you? Dunno for sure, but it feels like there is. He gazes into the distance, his voice low. I guess Haruka might be waiting for me too. Who's that? My little sister. You had a little sister? That's unexpected. <laughs> I'm actually the oldest. It explains why you're so nosy. I don't really know what to make of that. It's weird, though. My sister Haruka is more mature than me in some ways. She's pretty precocious. She used to talk to me about a boy in her class that she liked, asked me to keep it a secret from my dad. My mother died after giving birth to Haruka, so I'm kind of like her replacement mother. She followed me everywhere I went when we were younger. Oh no. Did I say too much? Maybe I annoyed him. Sorry, I didn't mean to ramble. 
I don't mind. Really? But I guess you wouldn't be interested in hearing me go on about my sister. That's not true. Huh? Yamato fiddles with his coffee cup. I can tell you really care about your sister. At least, that's what it seems like. His tone is gruff. It does sound a little angry. But it does feel a little softer now. I know I'm not imagining that. Ugh, what am I even talking about? I'm an idiot. No, you're not! I... I was happy to hear you say that, actually. I wasn't really trying to. He scratches the side of his face nervously. Is he feeling shy? It's kind of cute. What are you grinning at, creep? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. Why couldn't you? Um, no reason. I wave my hands placatingly. If I called him cute, he'd probably get mad at me. Speaking of which, do you have any siblings, Yamato? Dunno. Can't remember anything about my family. He taps his head with his finger. It's like... It's like there's something hitching in the back of my head. But I can't really grab hold of it. It's irritating. I see. Well, I'm sorry if I upset you. I don't really care. It's just weird to not really know who you are. Yeah, I know the feeling. Yamato's right. All I can remember right now is my family. I don't remember anything else. Not my real name, not why I'm here. You kind of seem like a big brother, Yamato. Huh? Where'd that come from? It was just a spontaneous thing, but now he's glaring at me. Oh, uh, sorry. Just a random thought. You're kind of a gruff guy, but you take care of others. That's what made me think of it. I wasn't lying. Here we are now, sitting and chatting together in the middle of the night. His tone might be brusque, but what he's actually saying is a bit encouraging. Maybe I'm just hearing what I want to hear. <laughs> I wouldn't want a slow sister like you. <laughs> I guess not. Do I seem like a little sister? Uh, not exactly. But you're pretty out of it for being the oldest. I guess I'd better pull myself together then. Meh. I think you're doing alright. You what? Nothing. I'm gonna make some more coffee. You want some? Yes, please. Do you need a hand? Don't mock me. I know how to make coffee. With that, he disappears into the kitchen. I was worried he'd go back to his room. I'm happy he's staying. After he returns with the coffee, we continue our awkward, low-key conversation about nothing. Just a little ado about nothing. He's usually so pricky, pricky, <laughs> prickly and unapproachable. But I know Yamato is kind at heart. He's just not very good at expressing that kindness. The night is long, so I hope we can spend it together talking about anything and everything. These two are so well suited so far. They just, they, they get each other. They just get it. Alright, so that's it for right now. Um, I think that's another one, but that's going to be at chapter 3. So let's go back to chapter 2. Actually, I think we can go to here, right? Yes. It's the only one we haven't unlocked yet. Okay. We're gonna go here and pick who we're exploring the mansion with today. Oh, wait a minute. We skipped the, uh, the very important scene that I do not want to miss. I'm surprised that's not its own scene, actually. Okay. Let's go back to chapter two. Because we have some problems summoning our gun, remember, guys? So, let's... Okay, stop, stop, stop. Alright. Let's see, where is it? Okay. 
Uh, let's go here. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Wrong button. Okay. It's O, I needed, not L. Let's see. Okay. Here? There we go. I love that you can jump around. It is so handy. Okay. Definitely don't want to miss this scene. This is one of my favorite scenes in the game, gosh darn it. Uh, yeah! Ha! Nah. Later that night. Once everyone has gone to bed and I am alone, I resume my practice. The power of thought. If I picture the gun in my head, maybe I can get it to appear. But I don't know what a real gun is like. I saw one when the person in the fox mask showed up, but I can't remember it very well. <sighs> I have to do this, though. Ha! I hold out my hand as if aiming with a gun and try to force the image into my mind. I continue to do so, as though in prayer, but after a few moments I hear the floor creaking. Huh? Yamato? I thought you already went to bed. Is something wrong? I'm thirsty. Came down for a drink. How about you? Um, I couldn't fall asleep. So you were practicing by yourself? Uh, yeah. Hmm. He gives a quick grunt and then fixes me with a brazen stare. Now what? The silence is awkward. And why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? You're scared of me, aren't you? Huh? What makes you say that? I'm not. I've just got a hunch you're afraid of something. Is that how he sees me? Someone who's afraid? I never really thought about it. What is it that I'm afraid of? I try to reconsider my feelings. Fear. It's an emotion I've felt plenty of times since I came here. Being locked up in the manor, getting attacked by monsters. Extraordinary things I never would have imagined happen every day. And every time they do, I'm suffocated by my fear. Compared to all of that, Yamato isn't frightening at all. He'd never say mean things to hurt my feelings or try to lay a hand on me in anger. I'm even beginning to feel a little close to him as an ally. But the fear I felt over the past few days is of a different variety. Yeah. I might be a little afraid when it comes to you, Yamato. See? Knew it. Oh, but it's not that I'm afraid of you. It's more that I'm afraid for you. Sometimes... Sometimes you can be a little reckless. Come again. I'm not doing a very good job explaining myself. I'm afraid of people going away. I'm scared of the people in our hideout vanishing one by one. Even though we found this place, you're so desperate to find another way out of the manor, to kill those monsters. You don't seem to care about the danger. Because I have to get out of here. I feel the same way, but if one of us died trying to do it, I'd feel even worse. When I look at you, I... I get a feeling that you might go away, and it makes me afraid. Hmm. Having said it out loud, I finally realize the truth. That's it. What I fear more than anything else is losing things. My home. My loved ones. Just the thought of it grips my heart with pain. That's why we need weapons. We've got to have them so we can get all those shards and protect each other. Yeah, you're right. Get yourself in position. What? Yamato stands behind me and takes my hands. He then brings them up in front of me. There it is. Wh what's he doing? He's so... so close to me. Like that. Take aim. Imagine it. Imagine? Imagine yourself holding a gun. Okay. I will. I've been doing that for a while, though. It never works. I honestly have no idea what to do. Well? Huh? What color is the gun? Um... 
Silver, I suppose. And the weight. How does it feel in your hands? Um, I think it's like... I visualize each detail as he questions me. How come I never noticed before that Yamato has two gold watches? He has one on each hand. Never noticed that till right now. Color, weight, texture, size, shape. With each question I answer, the outline of the weapon slowly forms in my mind. The image continues to expand, and I start to feel as if I'm holding the real thing. <laughs> I recall the death knell of the monsters, the ones I killed with my own hands. I... I don't think I can do it. Yes, you can. Don't stop until I tell you. It's not the gun you're afraid of. But losing your friends, right? Yeah. So use that gun and protect them. Protect the things that are important to you. Protect the things that are important to me. The things that are important to me. Important. Huh? A gun! It! My eyes fly open in astonishment. Silvery white particles of light float around the gun now in my hand. It feels as if it has always been there. See? Told you you could do it. I... I... I did it! You're incredible, Yamato! I finally did it! I'm so excited that I shout in joy, forgetting that everyone is already asleep. I... I heard you. Calm down. But until now, I couldn't do it at all! I'm just so happy! I didn't know what to do! You just didn't have enough imagination. Really? Although, maybe he's right. I was able to do it once he guided me through it. I open my hand slightly and look inside. They are wrapped around the gun, as though it is something precious to be protected. An ivy patterning snakes across the grip, with an embossed gem set into it. The gun is far more beautiful than I had anticipated. I've been thinking of it as something frightening, but seeing it myself actually makes me feel like I can rely on it. This weapon is the tool that will light the way to our future. Yo, quit eyeballing that thing. It's creepy. <laughs> I just can't help but smile knowing I won't be holding us back anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah! I... Oh! <clears throat> With our faces close, our eyes suddenly meet. I recall the way he was standing until a little while ago, embracing me from behind. Thinking about it makes my heart start to pound so early. M my bad! No, I should be the one apologizing! We jump away from each other, and I realize that Yamato's cheeks have taken on a slight blush. That... we... it's not like it was a hug or something. Anyways, thanks. I can get the gun to appear now thanks to you. I didn't do all that much. Hikage taught me this method, too. He did? Yeah. That guy's actually pretty impressive. Always very cool and aware of his surroundings. He's got everything I lack. That's what I was thinking when we were out exploring the manor the other day. Hikage and Yamato. What an odd pairing. Although, maybe the fact that they're total opposites is exactly why they're able to respect one another. Plus, he reminds me of somebody. Does he? No, never mind. He scratches his head and lazily turns away. Well, looks like we'll be going monster hunting starting tomorrow. Rest up. I will. And thank you again for staying up so late to help me. You got it. His response is curt as he makes his way back up the stairs to the mezzanine. Wait, didn't he say he was down here for a drink? He went back without getting one. I hope that's okay. Maybe he came down specifically to check on me? Nah, that couldn't be it. <laughs> I tighten my grip on the newly created gun in my hand as I gaze off in the direction Yamato disappeared in. Nah, he couldn't be that kind. Can't be. Meh. 
damn, Benny Yuri! That's awesome! You've completely mastered it. Yeah! I finally caught up to all of you! The following day, voices of admiration surround me as I show them my gun. They're praising me so much. I guess all that practice was worth it. All the trouble you had up till yesterday seems unbelievable now. Did you have some sort of breakthrough? Um... It's all thanks to Yamato's help. Oh, he looked away from me. Maybe I ought to keep it a secret. Then Yuri. Oh, no! I was just practicing a bunch and finally figured it out. Uh-huh. No kidding. This means all of us can make our weapons appear. Monster hunting time at last. Monster hunting. Those words quickly take on a new sense of reality as tension grips the room. No matter how we look at it, this is going to be dangerous, so let's split into teams for now. Indeed, that would be best. So, how are we going to divvy ourselves up? Same teams as last time sounds good to me. Hmm. Why don't we give preference to what the lady would like? What would you like to do, Benny Yuri? Let's see. The person I want to go with is... This boy. He helped me with my training yesterday, so if I have to choose, I'll go with Yamato. He looked like he didn't want to discuss it when it came up earlier, though. Um, I... I had been hoping to see his reaction in secret. Huh? For some reason, our gazes collide. Shoot! It's going to be weird if I look away now. Alright, I've got nothing to lose. I'll just ask. Um... Would you mind if I went with you, Yamato? <laughs> huh? Why does he look so surprised? I didn't say anything particularly weird, did I? You're an oddball, aren't you? People don't normally want to hang out with a guy like me. They... don't? Why? I don't know. Because I'm, like, not that friendly. And stuff. Looking dumbstruck, Yamato pulls himself together and lets out a small sigh. Fine. Come with me. Oh! Are you sure? Yeah, but in exchange. Make sure you don't slow me down, got it? Oh, yes! I'll do my best! I take off after Yamato, following him as we set off into the outside world. I'm excited! Yay! After leaving the hideout, we decide to go to the unexplored second floor of the house, taking the stairs by the main entrance. Okay, so you guys just went directly there. Interesting. It shouldn't be that much different from the first floor. Although the structure of the hallway is the same as the first floor, as we expected, the decor is completely different. Wow! This is wild! What are all these masks? I love how differently this plays out with each of the guys. We always make it up to the second floor eventually, but... Don't ask me. How should I know? The surface of the wall is adorned by a huge number of showy masks designed to look like animals. The monsters are scary, but these are kind of creepy too. I wonder if these are the master's collection. Ignoring my nervousness, Yamato hurries ahead. If we could, I'd like to take my mind off of this with some conversation, but he might get mad if I talk to him. Without a word, we continue walking in search of monsters. After some time passes... Hey, say something. What? It's creepy when you're all clammed up. Even more than those damn masks. Hey, that's mean! Saying I'm creepier than those masks is a little much. I'm a little put out, but I'm also genuinely happy to have a chance to find something to talk about. Enthused, I try to think of a topic. I haven't talked to Yamato that much in the past. I want to ask him a bunch of stuff. Oh, I know. When the master of the manor sent us those messages, what kind of picture did you get, Yamato? Huh? Did you remember anything about your family or something? 
My question is nonchalant, but it quickly darkens his face. Oh no. Did I ask something I shouldn't have? He was in a bad mood after he got his memory back, now that I think of it. I... um... I got a picture of my family. There were four of us in it. Uh-huh. Our family is me, my dad, my little sister, and Koro. My mom passed away after she gave birth to my sister, but the four of us get along great. You mean the three of you and your one pet? No. Koro is the fourth member of our family. Good on you, Benny Yuri. Admittedly, I don't remember much. We found him in a cardboard box one rainy day in the park. He was wrapped up in a blanket, but totally soaked and shivering. My sister Haruka and I adopted him, but he was afraid of us at first. I think because he had been abandoned. He used to snap at our hands a lot in the beginning. Oh no. Is this like an analogy for <laughs> for uh, Yamato? He was like, you know, a little afraid he'd snap a lot, but eventually warmed up. Just like you will. When I was a kid, that seemed really scary. Yeah. My father taught us that love is something you have to communicate. So we were patient and just kept trying to care for him. And one day, he wagged his tail and came near us. And another day, when I got lost on a long walk, he found me and guided me home while I was crying. Aw, Koro! So sweet, must protect Koro! Oh? He's a smart boy, then. Yeah, super clever. I wonder how he's doing now. I get lost in my memories for a few moments as Yamato nods and listens. I wanted to know more about him, but I just ended up talking about myself. After we finished talking, I realized something. <laughs> yes, girl, yes! One day, Yamato's gonna wag his tail and approach us for smooches. I'm calling it now. It's gonna happen. Yamato reminds me of Koro. When we first met, he was cold and brushed me off. But then he offered his hand and helped me out when I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> What's with you? I was just thinking about how you're actually pretty similar to Koro. The hell? You saying I'm like a dog? Hmm, no. It's more that I think Koro is like a person, but you two are definitely alike. I don't get it. <laughs> I let out a giggle as he continues grumbling, but he eventually gets caught up in my amusement and smiles at me. I wish I could see Dad. And Haruka. And Koro. Yeah. That's why we've got to get out of here fast. Whoa. Where the hell are those things? I wonder. We walk and walk, searching everywhere until our legs start to tire. Even so, we still can't find any of the monsters. Interesting. So we ended up in here. Like the hall on the first floor, most of the doors up here are locked. The only unlocked one we find leads to what seems to be a storage room. Figures. We get attacked right away when we're unarmed, but as soon as we want to find them, they're nowhere to be found. I find myself hoping that nothing happens and we go back to the hideout, but we still have to collect those kaleidoscope shards. I scold myself for being relieved that we're not, we've not found anything and try to steal myself for what's to come. At that moment, I hear the sound of rain from far off. Rain. Yeah. I'm feeling chilly, so it must be night already. Don't. We didn't find a thing. He spits out his comment. Though whether from impatience or frustration, I can't be sure. Resigned, we start heading out of the room. The monsters get more active at night, so maybe we should head back to the hideout for the time being. Yeah. Ugh. What the? Who was that? I don't know. The moment we turn to exit the room, a blood-curdling scream rips through the air. Come on. Right. What happened? 
Guns in hand, we run towards the source of the voice. Run like you mean it! I repeat to myself, trying to force my stumbling legs to keep moving. We continue on, determined to locate the source of the incident. Yamato, there! Before long, I spot a dark shadow lurking in the center of the hallway. And beyond it is a boy in the cat mask, trembling as he is pursued by the shadowy form. <laughs> help me! <clears throat> Please, mister! Miss, help me! Hang on, we're coming! Whoa. The boy notices us and screams for help. But in that instant, before we can reach them, the monster slashes at the boy with razor-sharp claws. Uh, uh, mister, I... Hey! Kid, are you... Mister... <sighs> like he hasn't quite realized what has happened, the boy stands stock still, his eyes wide. A black bruise gradually spreads across his body, swallowing him up into the darkness. No. It can't be. He disappeared? Did he die? Were we too late? Interesting. That's the first time one of the monsters has caught those guys. Instead of, like, a kid turning into a monster, or the kid disappearing, the monster actually clawed one and it disappeared into darkness. Okay. The two of us gawk, dumbfounded, and powerless. The monster turns slowly and sets its sights on us. <gasps> Yamato! Yamato's eyes are squeezed shut. Slowly, dimly, he opens them. <laughs> As I call out to him, I realize that something is wrong. He is overflowing with rage. It's as though blue flames are blazing around his body. Oh no, he's gone full anime on us already. You bastard. You're gonna pay for this! Let's kill this thing, Benny Yuri! R right I got you. Hopefully. That's the first time seeing that. Okay. Gotta make our boy proud. Not hold him back. So I'm gonna say that I'm sucking really bad, because that usually means I'll do good, right? Sure, we'll, we'll save that. Goodness gracious. Lock on, you mouse. Lock on, darn you. Anytime you wanna. Come on. Come on. Okay, that's good. Yep, keep keep locking on. Just keep keep telling yourself you're sucking at this so you get that S rank. <laughs> Don't even think about the S rank. Just think about how disappointed Yamato is in you. <laughs> and your shooting abilities. And it'll be fine. You gotta psych out the game think that you think you suck. That's the key. You gotta give in to despair in order to succeed in life. Or something. Okay. For some reason I thought that was like the last butterfly. Don't know why I thought that, but... Whew. Well, Yamato looks happy. Do I dare to dream? I dare to dream! Yay! I love the blue. Blue's looking good. Alright. I'll take that quite happily. D did we get it? Yeah. We managed to defeat it somehow. The monster's form dissolves into a kaleidoscope of black butterflies. We got it. And my fall over again. Just as they were the other day, the butterflies are absorbed into my accessory. Yamato, I... <laughs> Crouching down slowly where the monster once stood, Yamato picks something up off the ground. It's a shard of glass. Probably for the kaleidoscope. Oh, just like the one I brought back before. Again. 
I failed again. Again? He begged us for help. And again, I... Oh no, did it make you think about your brother? Agony flooding his face. He pounds the floor, glass shard still in his hand. Ow. Over and over, he slams the floor until something red starts to drip from his fist. My dude! It's blood! He cut himself on the kaleidoscope shard! But... I can't bring myself to say anything to him. It feels so wrong, speaking to him when he's in such awful pain. He must have remembered something painful when we regained part of our memories. The sound of the rain drumming violently on the manor fills my ears. For a while, all we can do is gaze dimly into the empty air, as if searching for the shade of the boy. 